Hi everyone, it's Samita. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing what lab tests you should order for androgenetic alopecia, whether for ruling it in or out, and whether it's coexisting with any other conditions. So let's get started. If you're new to my channel, my name is Samita and I'm a naturopathic medical student. On my channel, I talk a lot about my healing journey with PCOS and androgenetic alopecia, as well as the research that I've done regarding this condition and sharing that information with all of you. I also share healthy recipes and some vlogs, as well as more recently, ASMR videos, which are designed to help you relax, de-stress, and help you sleep if you have trouble sleeping. And we all know that sleep and stress are both really important parts of um, healing from a condition, so making sure that you are managing your stress well. So I do hope that you will watch my ASMR videos if you are interested. In that and for everyone else welcome back I am so happy that you're watching another video of mine so with androgenic alopecia I'm going to cover some of the key lab tests that you probably really should request or that your doctor really should order versus other ones that I think are also incredibly important um, but may not necessarily be the essential ones so when it comes to key tests I think that um, the androgens obviously are the ones that you want to test. So DHEAS, that will show you what your adrenal androgens look like because DHEA is only produced from the adrenal gland. Um, so that's important to look at and to uh, interpret that based on your age because we know that when you're younger, your DHEA tends to be a bit higher and then it tends to kind of come down as you are older. So just making sure to interpret that based on your age and seeing if it's high, then that, sh that shows that your adrenals are pumping out too much androgens. And if it is low, it may be a sign of HPA axis dysfunction and more so um, your adrenals not being able to meet the demands of a lot of stress. Next, make sure that you test your free testosterone and total testosterone. I think these are both important and especially free testosterone because we're going to see the free floating testosterone in your blood that isn't matched up with your binding proteins. So like sex hormone binding globulin, for instance. Um, and the free testosterone tends to be higher with someone who has PCOS. However, when it comes to testing serum levels of testosterone, do be mindful that this doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have high testosterone if those levels aren't high. Because when it comes to something like androgenetic alopecia, we may have high levels in our scalp tissue, but not necessarily in our blood. So it's highly possible that your testosterone levels are completely normal, but you still have signs of androgen excess and androgenic alopecia. Me, for instance, my free testosterone is completely normal, but I still have androgen excess symptoms. Next, I think it's incredibly important to test your ferritin levels, and not just ferritin, but also TIBC, which stands for total iron binding um, capacity, and transfer and saturation. So these, are, these three are all very uh, good sensitive markers for um, the amount of iron that your body has and how much it's storing, etc. So we know that when you don't have enough iron levels in your body, in your blood, then we tend to have a condition called telogen effluvium. And technically, telogen effluvium is kind of the beginning of androgenic alopecia, as well as any other type of hair loss that is due to a shock or trauma or iron deficiency. So often androgenic alopecia can coincide with telogen effluvium in the case of an iron deficiency. So ideally, it's important to have ferritin levels at least 50 nanograms per milliliter. It's better if it's a little bit higher. And if you don't have enough, then it's important to maybe change up your diet a little bit, 
And if you're not absorbing the ferritin well enough, perhaps you have some digestive conditions and you're not able to really um, absorb it and digest it, then in that case, it might be a good idea to supplement with a bioavailable and gentle iron supplement, such as iron bisglycinate, maybe about 25 milligrams of iron bisglycinate once a day with food. I think it's also essential to do a complete thyroid panel while you're at it, because often when you have androgen excess symptoms or PCOS, that tends to coincide with hypothyroidism. So we know that hypo or hyperthyroidism, both of them actually affect hair loss and can increase hair loss because thyroid hormone is incredibly important for ensuring that you are growing your hair and maintaining your hair. So if this is something that's coinciding with your androgenetic alopecia, or maybe this is even a larger factor um, that is causing your hair loss, then we have to make sure we catch that. So I've done a video in the past about thyroid hormones um, and what is hypothyroidism and how to interpret thyroid hormones, which I will link up here and down in the description below. And essentially, you should ask your doctor to order TSH, T4, T3, reverse T3, anti-TPO, and anti-TG. And this comprehensive panel will really tell you what is going on with your thyroid hormones and whether that's also impacting your hair loss. So generally, when you're going to a medical doctor, say you're a family practitioner or some, someone of a specialist, and they're assessing your hair loss and whether it might be androgenetic alopecia, they're often going to take a history. And depending on the healthcare practitioner, it may be comprehensive or not, and depending on the time that they have. But I think it's really important to ask the following questions. Um, to ask about what happened three months ago, because we know that um, when it comes to hair, Three months ago it could have been programmed to fall out and then three months later it will fall out so if you had a situation of um, very heavy stress trauma or shock about three months ago then right now if you're losing hair that makes sense and that would be a case of telogen effluvium i think it's also important to ask uh, whether you're eating well or enough and whether you're having enough micronutrients and macronutrients. When you're not getting enough food and you're not getting enough um, nutrients, whether overall or the micronutrients, your body's not going to favor your hair because the hair is like an aesthetic trait, right? It's very much, it's not essential to your survival. So say you are um, dieting and not having enough calories or you're on a very very low carb diet and you're not having enough carbs to tell your body especially for women that you aren't going through a state of starvation and stress then your body is going to perceive this as a stress and that can also cause your hair to fall out more in terms of micronutrients we already talked about ferritin iron um, it's also important to look at zinc because zinc actually promotes ovulation, it reduces inflammation in the body, and it blocks androgens. It also can help with stimulating hair growth, so that's something else to look into. And if you are eating a vegetarian diet, for example, you may not be getting enough zinc because often zinc comes from a lot of animal products, um, such as oysters and bread meat and that kind of thing. Other important nutrients include selenium, biotin, silica, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C. So it's really important to look at all of this, the composition of your diet, how well you're digesting and absorbing the foods, and whether you're taking a multivitamin to assess whether any of these micronutrient deficiencies can be contributing as well to your hair loss. So this brings us into other important tests that I think you should consider um, when trying to rule out the exact cause or causes of your hair loss and to look at your sex hormones in addition to the male ones, also looking at the female ones. So day 21 progesterone is really important. Um, 
So if you have a regular cycle, I would order that on day 21 or test that on day 21. Or if you have an irregular cycle to test that seven days after ovulation. And then also estradiol, you can test that on either day three along with day three LH and FSH, which are the hormones that are produced by the pituitary gland. And, though, and the LH and FSH will signal the ovaries to produce either estrogen or progesterone, depending on the type of cycle, depending on the pulsing. It's honestly, it's a pretty complicated uh, cycle that happens, but all of this matters when it comes to hair health as well, because we know that estrogen and progesterone are both incredibly, incredibly important for hair growth. So while androgens, too high androgens can cause hair to miniaturize and fall out, um, not enough of the female sex hormones or not optimal levels at the right times can cause your hair not to grow well enough. So there's there's both aspects that you have to consider. Furthermore, I think it's important to look at fasting insulin and glucose. Um, this is important because we know that insulin, if you have high insulin levels, that can stimulate your ovaries to produce more testosterone. And the testosterone can get turned into down the line DHT, which then impacts the hair follicles in the scalp if it's coming to the scalp and reacting with the receptors. So it's important to look at insulin glucose as well, fasting. And we want to aim for a fasting insulin level below 50 picomoles per liter. There's also the HOMA IR, which is um, glucose times insulin. So it's a, it's a formula, glucose times insulin divided by 22.5. And we want that value to be under 1.0. So don't worry, I'll link all of that in the description below so you can really like geek out with all that stuff. But I, I think that's incredibly important. Like I have um, insulin resistance, which is contributing to my PCOS and my androgen symptoms. And often that is kind of the root root cause of um, your androgen excess. So that's really important to look at as well. Another test that I would say to do is C-reactive protein. So C-reactive protein is a marker for inflammation. So it can it can detect different types of inflammation, including autoimmunity. So that we know that inflammation can really uh, affect hair growth as well, because when you have inflammation going on in your body, that's another source of stress. And the hair doesn't like stress, like we're not going to devote our resources into the hair if we're dealing with other sources of inflammation. So I think that checking C-reactive protein kind of lets you know what's happening in the body, um, whether there's different sources of inflammation we should really look, look into as a root cause. And on that note, when it comes to inflammation in the body, I think it would be important to do kind of like a food elimination test. So what you do is you try 30 days taking out like the major offenders, like for instance, gluten, dairy, um, maybe nuts if that might be something that you would react to, or maybe nightshades if you have something that could be autoimmune. So sort of taking out those things and um, after the 30 days, one by one introducing them and seeing if you have an, a reaction to them and whether it's generating more inflammation in your body, say like digestive problems or like joint pain or like brain fog. So I'll link some of those resources down in the description below because I think that can be really helpful and useful for um, the hair aspect as well because if we can minimize inflammation we can really encourage hair growth. Other sources of inflammation are like environmental pollutants, um, also like sources of toxins that you might be coming into contact regularly, say if you're using plastic a lot then BPA like plastic containers and whatnot. Um, say you're smoking or you're using drugs, certain medications can also increase inflammation in the body, um, as well as other inflammatory conditions and digestive issues. And in naturopathic medicine, and as a naturopathic medical student, like we really harp on digestion because we believe that the gut is really the kind of the source of a lot of the chronic 
diseases that we see because that's where you know, that's where food goes and that's where we're able to absorb nutrients that's where like we have the barrier between the gut lumen and the blood and the rest of the body so if that uh, gut isn't sealing properly then different like toxic substances and proteins that shouldn't be getting through is getting through and causing a lot of chaos in the immune system so I always think that it's important to kind of like work on a gut healing sort of diet and protocol uh, first of all so I can link some of those resources in the in the description below as well so the last thing I want to talk about which I've covered in a previous video which I will link up here and down in the description below and I will probably talk more at length in another video because one of you have re requested it um, is the birth control pill and we know that the birth control pill has different androgen indexes so at a higher androgen index that can actually promote hair loss um, the 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 female pattern type of hair loss and as well as going off of any kind of birth control pill that can definitely disrupt your system and cause kind of a post pill androgen access. So that's also something that you should consider. So hopefully you can find a integrative or functional medicine doctor or a naturopathic doctor who can really like look at all the root causes and really um, do a comprehensive history holistically and giving you a number of different options depending on your goals on how to treat it. So that's it for today's video. I hope that was helpful. This I know this was a very highly requested video and I hope I did it justice. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will answer them to the best of my ability. And um, if you have any requests for future videos like these, let me know exactly what you want. So if you haven't already, I would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and like this video if you do in fact like it. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye.